The park sure is quiet tonight. A little too quiet. How can it be too quiet? Oh, that's just an expression. Pointless expressions are just part of the job here at Tree Watch Nights. How come that lady's wearing a bikini at night? Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Huh? What was that? Better check it out. No, I'm the new kid. I'll go. Oh. Uh. <gasps> I sure hope he's all right. I suppose you could say that. Maybe I should go look around. No, I'm in charge. You go. Oh, <laughs> oh no. Gimme? Gimme? Gimme! Dang, it's darker than a beach bum's... D what the... Ow! Oh! How the heck did this happen? TW1, code green, three down, hut! Must get help. <laughs> oh! <laughs> we interrupt this program for a TCC News Bulletin. This just in. There's been no change in the terrorist chase. The management just wanted you to see their expensive 3D chrome logo. Shameless, isn't it? Now you can own your very own copy of today's maniac terrorist chase. The bone-churning speed bump incident. The heart-twisting bagpipe exchange. All the way up to, but not including, the fiery bomb-soaked conclusion. Send $12.99. Make that $25.99 to get your piece of history today. No, Timmy, don't leave your car. Your puppy has to what? No, I don't think it'll stain. Good, hang on. This is the worst thing I've done since I introduced Millie to Vanilli. I'm the lowest of low. I hate myself. Oh, don't do that. That's God's job. I must find some way to save Timmy. But how? <laughs> you preempt Tree Watch for this silly chase? I am outraged. Outraged! And I am more than outraged. I'm... I'm... Miffed? Adult? <laughs> Drunk? No! I'm incensed! Ooh, good, good word. word. You interrupted my best scene. What's the point of being a hero if nobody sees it? Hmm? Yes, yes, shut up. This is no time to be discussing Tree Watch. Tree Watch, of course. Brock, I have a new Tree Watch scene for you. A scene unprecedented in the annals of filmdom. Are we allowed to say annals? <laughs> Run, get into your Breck Hamill costume. We are shooting the finale right now, live in the parking lot. Yes! Once again, whining and complaining pay off big. <sighs> hey! What about me? What do I get? Hmm? Hmm? Uh, 10% more than Brock? Deal. See ya! Sorry about the salty language, Mr. Wuffles. I'm a little on edge. I have the perp in my sides. Just don't harm Wuffles. He's the brains of the outfit. Should I take the kid out? Everything's gonna be A-OK. -okay. Uh, what the heck? Take him out. What the? Hey! <clears throat> it's Brick Hamill. <clears throat> From Tree Watch? <clears throat> no way. Let me see. Don't fire! Team Tree Watch is on the job. We'll hand these dirty turco scotchies over to the proper authorities. Imagine seeing the actual Breck Hamill save the day. <laughs> and I think some folks don't believe TV is real. Chicago hype. Billy, I have to talk to you. It's about our baby. Not now, Diane. Can't you see I'm in the middle of someone? Hi, I'm Dr. Austin. Your operation was a complete success. You mean you got rid of the antlers? Oh, right. The antlers. Oops, there goes my beeper. Philip, I made up my mind. I don't want to be a shrink or a brain surgeon. What I really want to be is... Ooh. An exotic dancer! Ooh. Watch me work! And now, the even more 
or implausible season finale of Chicago Hype. My God, Aaron. This memo says one of our doctors is actually a space alien. Who? The gambling playboy? The feminist astronaut surgeon? The openly gay heart of gold black guy? Who? So it's you. It's you, Doc. We interrupt this program for, ah, uh, you know. George Heinlein here with a shocking story of fraud and deception at the highest levels. At first, I was suspicious with that turco scotch crap. But when Breck Hamill, a fictitious character, saved the day, I mean, really, people, are you mindless, gullible fools? The fiends behind this hoax are none other than our own. We interrupt this bulletin for a TCC exclusive. Teeny Bikini Fish Fry! <laughs> you wanted to see me, sir? Timmy, my lad, you're all right? Sir, Mr. Hammond explained it all to me. I was a Death Star on Tree Watch! Excellent, excellent. Mr. Wuffles is tuckered out. So are the worms. Mr. Hammond set them down to rest in the dumpster. <laughs> wow! Are those the ratings? What were you showing? Leprechauns? Mm, sort of. Listen, boy, even high ratings are nothing compared to the well-being of our little Timmy. Ah, oh, jeez. <laughs> I feel as if I'm supposed to give you a hug now. <laughs> This is a conspiracy. I'm phoning my lawyers. I'm phoning Woodward and Bernstein. I'm phoning Oprah. Hey, what's wrong with Mr. Heinlein? Sour grapes, Timmy, sour grapes. Oh, you mean hemorrhoids. <laughs> my Gramps has them, too. Hmm, yes. But what do we care? We're young, and what's more, we're in the middle of a teeny bikini fish fry. Dance, I command you. Dance! <laughs> 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 You're watching Good to have you. Man, that's fun. I'm glad you guys could come hang out, considering um, we are at war. It's pretty weird, isn't it? We're at war. We're like dudes in caves. We're fighting like Star Wars, like the sand people we're fighting. They're hanging out in caves. They got a stink. Bats are hanging out in the walls. Go that way, man. Osama Bin Laden just hanging out with a dirt and stick. Okay, you go that way. <laughs> you go that way. And I stay here, huh? <laughs> Imagine you're hanging out in a war, and then, you, you know, you're, you're at war, man, so you expect to see, like, tanks or, like, planes coming by. First thing they saw was, like, a dude on a camel. 
Uh, guys, in the distance, you just see some guy. <laughs> We got a guy in a camo. I don't, he's not talking English, man. I don't know what's up. Is he with us or them? What's up? We got a camo! Shoot him, man. What are we doing? Talk English, hammer. <laughs> we get that technology. You see that? Like when we first started bombing them. It's just dudes with controllers. To the right, to the right! I hit a village, man. My joystick sucks. Let me try yours. <laughs> you know, I guess they're making a statement, but jeez, look at those people. They gotta look at themselves. They got no sexual drive over there, no love. What can, every human being needs a sex drive. Keep it going. This is the Taliban sex drive. That's, that's the chicks. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> kind of dating is that? Here comes your date. <laughs> Greatest childhood growing up. I grew up in Valley Stream, Long Island. Yeah. Long Island Railroad. Isn't that awesome, man? When you go to the city, you're always so afraid to go to the city. Dude, you're not going to this, you're not driving to the city. Oh, no, I wouldn't drive the city at all, man. You get dry humped. You pull out of your car and they dry hump you, man. <laughs> Take the train. Hope I don't have to change it, Jamaica. <laughs> White dudes know what I'm talking about, man. They are scared of Jamaica. Hope I don't have to change it, Jamaica, man. <laughs> I'm gonna change Jamaica, oh my God! I'm gonna be dry and salt to death, oh my God! Jackasses. <laughs> but Valley Stream, Long Island, I used to love playing stickball. I never see kids playing out in the street anymore. We would play outside all day long. What was cool about my neighborhood, there was like about 10 of us growing up together. It was like the little rascals meets good fellas, you know? <laughs> and it was, it was like six years old to like 12 years old. And we'd always play stickball and this one little kid, Tommy. He was that one kid that always wanted to play with you. Hey man, can I play, can I play? Come on man, I'll play in the outfield. <laughs> Tommy, get off the street. No, I'm gonna play right here. When you're older. I'm old enough now. And... <laughs> <laughs> you hit a foul ball, like I'll get it, I'll get it, I'll get it. It'd <laughs> go in the sewer, Tommy'd be like, I'll go in the sewer, and you'd dangle him by his feet. I got it, I'm almost there, I got it. Rap to me, get out of here, I'm not afraid. <laughs> but we had this, this one field where we played, we had this dog, Duke. You know, the one dog on the block, and it was a big, long yard. And Duke was the dog that was nasty. You knew if he got out of that fence, you were gone. <laughs> But you tease him to death knowing he can't. You drive on your bike past his gate. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> but what sucked about Duke was every time we play, you know, every time we play stickball, we'd be in front of his house. So if you hit the ball into his yard, game is done. 
Jeffrey always hit in the yard. We were like, Jeffrey, don't swing on the inside pitch. Because if you hit in there, I'm going to punch you in the head. <laughs> and so sure enough, one day he's hanging out, and Tommy's like, hey, can I play in the outfield? Tommy, just sit down. Bink! Jeffrey hits it into Duke's yard. We're like, Jeffrey, you suck! Come over here, I'm going to punch you in the face. And he knows a foul ball. Get over here, I'm going to punch you in the face. I'm going to punch him in the face over a 75-cent ball. But that's the way we lived, baby. <laughs> He shouldn't have swung at an inside pitch. <laughs> but the worst was, so now the ball goes in, and Tommy's like, before we can say anything, I'll get the ball! I'm like, Tommy, no! And he hopped over, and he starts running into the yard. I swear to God, I'm not even lying to you. And he starts running in, and Duke is nowhere to be sound. We're like, Tommy! Tommy, watch out for Duke. Duke said, get out of the yard. Get out of the yard. I got the ball! <laughs> Tommy! He turned around, and Duke saw him. Duke went, what's up? <laughs> Start running, Dick. <laughs> I swear to you, now Tommy's only six years old, man. He's only this big, and he starts bulking it. It's like a movie. He's like, and we're like, Tommy, come on, hurry up. Throw the ball over. Hurry up, hurry up. Throw the ball over. Hurry up. <laughs> Tommy's running. Duke, I swear in my life, I was never so scared in my entire life. Duke is not even barking. He's just at this. <laughs> I'm gonna eat you to pieces and then crap on your face when I'm done. <sighs> and I swear to you, Tommy's running. I got my hand out. Tommy, come on. Tommy, it was, it was like a movie. On my life, he slipped. And like his face hit the fence. And we're like, oh no! And we all backed away, because here's Duke. Duke comes running up, and he stops right in front of Tommy. And I swear to you, it was the scariest moment in my life. I was already figuring out, how am I, how am I gonna forget it? All I can do is watch. <laughs> Duke, I ain't gonna help him, man. <laughs> if I got a stick, I'll help him. Duke stopped, and Tommy's like, eh, eh. He starts sniffing him. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, Tommy gets up to make a break for it. And Tommy's only this big. Duke gets on his hind legs. I'm not lying to you. This is a horrible, horrible sight. I, I'm not even exaggerating. On my child's life, his two front paws grasp on to Tommy's shoulders, knock this poor kid to the ground, and starts dry humping the crap out. <laughs> drink anymore. Well, I do. <laughs> I don't drink heavy anymore. I used to plow. Plow. <laughs> I used to drink mind erasers. You ever hear them? Oh. I don't know what I was thinking. It's like vodka, Kahlua, and soda water in a glass like that with a straw, and you have to suck it down as quick as possible. <laughs> Which is fine, but in like three minutes, you know, all the carbon monoxide takes your liver as a. Like, <laughs> to your burp. <laughs> but you have like two of them, then you find out why they call mind erases. Your mind erases all communication and the rest of your body. I gotta go to the bathroom. Oh, yeah, man. 
But to me, you know, if you drink and you're over 21, you get hammered. It's goofy. You're dead drunk, man. I'm that guy, too, I have to tell you. I'm wasted, man. Are you guys wasted like me? Because I'm wasted. You're not wasted? How can you not be wasted? Because I'm like, OK, let's say this is hammered. Let's say this is like, whoo, look out. And let's say this is wasted. I'm like, look out, hammer. Take your shirt off. But to me, the only time when drinking is fun, which it is fun, is when you're a kid. And I mean by that, it's like 15, 16, because then it's like an Olympic event. <laughs> There's all these little rules and stuff. It starts right away at your mother. Come here. Who are you hanging out with? <laughs> now, these friends you're hanging out with, I don't like them. Do you understand me? They don't even introduce themselves. They just drive right up and beat the horn. Ma, they do not. You don't even finish a sentence. Back later, Mom. <laughs> you get in the car and your friends are gone. They're peeling out in your neighborhood. <laughs> Dude, chill out. It's a neighbor. Shut up, Barry. <laughs> what are you supposed to be home now? <laughs> and never pass out in front of them. They're just right, you know, uh, they'll write all over you. I crap in my pants. I love crap. I crap my pants. I love eggs and snot. You know, whatever. They'll dump you right in the front lawn at the end of the night. <laughs> the worst, though, is my mom, boy, did not want to wake her up. She drank gin martinis before she went to bed. So if you woke up her in the middle of the night, it's like startling a monster. <laughs> so I'd be like 16, just hammered. And you think, you're so smart. I'm cool. She'll never figure me out. And I can hear her snoring. Uh-oh. And I'd always wake her up, I'd always like, somehow wake her up. This one night I finally got in and I got into my bed. You know that feeling as a kid? Cool. You sit down, but then all of a sudden I saw the door open up behind me. <laughs> Baby, it's the boogeyman. <laughs> she come in the doorway. That was the worst. Thrown on trial. What the hell is going on here, 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 here? You smell like alcohol! Ow, 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 ow. How do you do that echo? 